Uh, my name is Steve Cooper. I'm a medical doctor. I currently practice ear, nose, and throat and head and neck surgery in the San Fernando Valley, a suburb of Los Angeles. I've been practicing here in this area for 42 years. Um, after getting out of the Navy, I was in Beverly Hills for a while and then decided to move out here to uh, Tarzana, California, where we currently live in a, an equestrian community called Hidden Hills, California. Uh, and when I was in the Navy, I was uh, a lieutenant commander, which is a junior officer, which was senior enough for me. Yeah, that's a junior office, the yeah. high, highest level of junior. And then when you became a commander, yeah. you, jun uh, uh, commander, you got scrambled eggs on the back. Of us who were in medical school at the time and had graduated and were embarking on a residency specialty training program, we were given the option of getting a deferment, which would have allowed us to complete our residency training and then go into the military for a prescribed two years or take our chances with the draft. Uh, needless to say, I decided I would give, give the military two years in return for guaranteeing me the ability to complete my residency training. At the completion of my residency training, I was asked by the military, the Navy, which I had chosen, uh, where I might want to go. Um, and being a smart ass, uh, I said, I don't care where you send me, just so it's by the water. Needless to say, about two months later, when I got my orders to send me to the island of Guam, I was shocked. Didn't even know where Guam was. I had to look it up on a map. Um, and I really didn't want to go to Guam. At the time, uh, my mother-in-law, who was from Phoenix, Arizona, her family had known former uh, Governor, Governor, Senator Barry Goldwater of Arizona, and she suggested that I should write uh, Barry Goldwater a letter requesting a better location than Guam. And I did so. Uh, I think I probably requested San Diego or Hawaii or maybe at worst Great Lakes Naval Station. But I got a letter back from Barry basically saying, boy, you go where they tell you and shut your mouth. Well, the, the trust territory of the Pacific Islands included uh, all of the islands in an area called Micronesia. And there were several groups of islands in that area, um, Palau, Yap, Truk, Panape, Saipan, Tinian, and Guam. And since I was the only ear, nose, and throat doctor in that part of the southwestern Pacific, the Navy, as um, a gesture of goodwill to the locals, uh, allowed me and my wife and my corpsman to make periodic trips to the, outly, uh, to the outlying islands to provide needed medical and surgical care to the locals. And that's how we ended up on the island of Yap, which was very primitive and I presume remains primitive to this time. Yap, as I said, was very primitive. Um, stone money was used instead of standard paper currency. Uh, the women basically were topless. Um, they chewed something called betel nut, which turned their lips red. Um, but as part of our visit in Yap, we would see patients in the mornings, and those in, who needed surgery would, would uh, get surgery in the next day or so while we were there. It so happened that while I was there, uh, one of the chief's daughters, daughters had been injured. Uh, she made a mistake, which you don't make in tropical areas. She sat underneath a coconut tree. And you don't do that because occasionally coconuts fall off the trees. And it so happened that she was struck in the head by a falling coconut. As a consequence of which, she developed an injury um, in which uh, brain fluid 
cerebral spinal fluid was leaking from her brain out through her ear. And the concern with that kind of an injury is the potential for the patient to develop meningitis. And the treatment for that condition has to be surgical. So here we are uh, out in the middle of the Pacific uh, with my corpsman and my wife and a surgical team at the hospital who had very little experience with ear surgery. But needless to say, we went forward with the surgery which involved an operation called a mastoidectomy where we had to expose the place in the brain where the broken bone was leaking fluid. And we were able to do that successfully. And uh, we were able to st stop the leakage of spinal fluid. And I was happy for the patient and I was happy for myself, but I was particularly happy because the village chief was happy and I did not want to fail when it came to the daughter of the village chief. So at the end of our stay in Yap, which was probably four or five days, uh, this was something that I did voluntarily. Uh, it was probably one of the best times uh, uh, that I've ever had of a medical practice. Uh, there was no money involved. We weren't worried about anything but taking care of the locals. Uh, the night before our departure, uh, they threw a big party for us. Um, there was singing and dancing and we were given uh, gifts. And I will never forget that as long as I live. It was probably one of the most moving and memorable times I've ever had in the practice of medicine and surgery for almost 50 years. I was obligated to spend two years in the Navy on Guam. So toward the end of my two-year tour, which was April or May of 1975, well, two things happened. Number one, the Vietnam War ended. And uh, when the Vietnam War ended, um, the refugees that had been in Vietnam left Vietnam in the numbers of a, well over 100,000. They all came to Guam for relief and medical care and housing. And at that period of time, all of us in the Navy uh, took care of them and they were rehabilitated eventually and many of which came to the United States and to Southern California. So that was a very memorable part of our tour and it made me very, very proud to have been in the Navy at that time. Also nearing the end of uh, my tour, I got to know an ear, nose and throat doctor who was at the time practicing on the island of Oahu in Hawaii, who had been visiting in Guam with his son. Uh, and his son had sustained a scuba diving accident during which he had ruptured his eardrum. And I asked the doctor to bring his son to see me at the Navy clinic, and I took care of his son successfully. Um, but at the time, he, the doctor and I, uh, began to chat a bit, and he was telling me a, a bit about his very successful and busy ear, nose, and throat practice on the island of Oahu, and there was some discussion of my going to visit him and looking over his practice in Oahu. Uh, but by that time, my wife, Donna and I had been in the islands for two years and we'd had enough of island living. So we decided to uh, pass on the opportunity to go live on an island for another several years. And we came back to Southern California. I had an opportunity to uh, join an ear, nose and throat practice specializing in ear surgery in Beverly Hills. And I joined the partnership and practiced in Beverly Hills for five years. Uh, before moving uh, out here to the San Fernando Valley.